<clears throat> hey kids, Adam Savage in my cave. Got a mirror behind me. I've just been doing uh, filming a costume test fit. But right now I'm answering some questions from tested patrons uh, about my time on Mythbusters. And if you would like to become a tested patron, there is information on how to do that in the comments below. Um, one of the bonuses is you get to ask me questions and I will answer them here. Uh, Jared Hinderer, Hinderer, Hinderer is your last name. What must of your neighbors, what, your ancestors' neighbors, may have come up with that last name, Hinderer. Yeah, let's call that guy Hinderer. He's always getting in my way. Uh, there's a great book called English, called Mother Tongue, English and How It Got That Way by Bill Bryson. It's totally worth reading. Um, one of my favorite parts about it is they talk about last names, surnames. Uh, and that one was, surnames were not super common until we started trying to take censuses of how many people were in a given area. And then once you started counting people, you really needed to be able to separate John over here from John over there from John over here. So this John the blacksmith would be John Smith. This John the farrier would be John the horseshoe dude. And this John would be John the thief because he lived far away from town and he didn't get a say in what his surname was. This is like... Definitely, like there are some real insults that <laughs> that ended up becoming last names. But Jared Hinderer, I do not mean to denigrate your ancestors. You have asked an excellent question and here it is. Uh, throughout the show, there are a lot of vehicle myths and you and all the other presenters seem to have a decent grasp of stunt driving and car control. Did you ever take lessons in stunt driving in a formal setting or did, did it come down to on the job training from the professional drivers on set? Um, I'm gonna say both are true. Because what we did each time we had a vehicle myth, we would bring in an expert to help us understand how to execute that, those vehicle maneuvers, whether it was uh, 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 Conrad Grun Grunwald uh, teaching me how to drift or George Sack teaching me how to, uh, how to turn the speed bus. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, um, so uh, our, our, our main safety consultant through the entire run of Mythbusters is Nick Plache, a third generation Hollywood stuntman. Nick and his wife Angie have a business in which they do risk assessment for television shows and they are the freaking best. Um, I've worked with them on almost every show I have ever made. Um, and the, the process of working with them goes like this. We come up with a myth we want to do. We build what we think are a reasonable set of safety protocols to conduct the methodologies that we've come up with uh, uh, as safely as possible. And then we show that to Nick and Angie. Uh, they always had suggestions about ways in which we could make it better, make it safer. And then they would do all the talking to the insurance company for us. And over the years, What's funny is, is the normal procedure on a show like ours is when the show becomes a hit, they, they, the hosts become so valuable, they stop letting them do the really weird crap. Um, with us, it was the opposite, is that the more popular the show got, the weirder and greater our expertise became, and the more we got to do outlandish things. So at the very beginning, there's a standard thing in a host's contract about the maximum speed they're allowed to drive a vehicle. Uh, and I think in the beginning days, our contract said we couldn't drive a vehicle past 70 miles an hour um, on a closed track under controlled conditions. Um, by the end of the show, we had managed to increase that to 140 miles an hour on a closed track under controlled conditions. Um, the various stunt drivers that I trained with over the years were always unfailingly patient uh, very calm personalities. Stunt people in general are very calm in affect in person. Yeah. Uh, Randy Lamb, Zoe Bell. I mean, I, you know, it's funny because you think of a stunt person, they're like, they must be an adrenaline junkie. But I, I don't think that's the case. I don't think that the stunt person's uh, raison d'etre is to like, go for risk. I think it's about living an adventure to be sure. Um, 
So consequently, every lesson I've ever gotten from a stunt person, whether it's jumping off a building or driving a car or, or whatever, um, has always been from the standpoint of like real centeredness and uh, calmness in the approach to this dangerous activity. That's the total opposite of an adrenaline junkie. Like there was, you know, no like, just go for it, man, go for it. Like <laughs> none of that. Um, it's funny, of, over all the stunt driving that we did and the stunt, the driving shows were always my favorite. From a producing standpoint, you get the most bang for your buck. You put cameras all over the place. You tell a big, elaborate, fun story that covers a wide distance. From a personal standpoint, driving vehicles at speed under tactical conditions is an impossible amount of fun. Uh, fanging around with a Miata with like, you know, tacks that I can release out of the back or uh, spinning a Porsche out on a wet roadbed. Dude, it, if it looked like fun, it was when, whenever it was happening, it was twice as much fun as it looked like. Um, I have to say the tactical driving is one of the things that I miss most about the show on a purely physical fun level. Yeah, man, the drifting episodes, the drifting episodes are some of the most fun I have ever had. We got, to, we got to do some really outlandish crap. Um, yeah. Now I'm just thinking about cool stuff that happened in the past. <laughs> uh, I think I have answered your question. Thank you so much, Jared Hinderer. I apologize at the beginning. If it seemed like I was making fun of your name, I was just fascinated by it. Um, tested patrons, keep submitting your wonderful questions and I will continue to answer them. Stay safe, you guys, and I'll see you next time.